This is Dr. Matt Barber of Alabama Orthopedic Clinic. We are proud supporters of Ransom Reprogram, Ransom Ministries, and all of the good work that they do in our community. If you would like to learn more about us, check us out at alortho.com or barbertotaljoint.com. You can also hear more from me personally on the Ortho Real podcast. Thank you again for allowing us to be involved with Ransom Ministries and all of the great work that they do. Hey, welcome to the Ransom Experience. My name is Matt Armbruster, Executive Director of Ransom Ministries. You're going to hear stories from people that we've served and people that serve alongside us, as well as those that we partner with throughout our community. You're going to hear about decisions they made throughout their life and things that happened through different avenues of their life that caused them to go down a path that they didn't see themselves going. And then also those decisions that they have to make on a daily basis to stay away from those decisions that they made in the past. Ransom Ministries empowers people to utilize their God-given gifts and talents in their career and for their community. All along the way, we learn how to help those close to us and also maybe even help ourselves. This is real. This is raw. This is Ransom. This show is brought to you by Ransom Recycling, your number one choice for electronic recycling in Mobile, Alabama. Help reduce waste in our landfills by recycling all of your unwanted, unused, and non-working electronics. Ransom Recycling is a division of Ransom Ministries that is helping to put men and women back to work. Check out RansomMinistries.com for a complete list of acceptable items. Drop-offs and pickups can be easily scheduled through the website. Please note that we are not accepting TVs at this time. Ransom Recycling, open 8 to 3, Monday through Friday. Help our planet while helping men and women re-enter the workforce. With every star, we are born again. Oh, in your heart, spend less time in your head. Welcome to the Ransom Experience, where each week we talk to individuals that We've met through reprogram, through recycling, and through volunteerism or whatever it might be. Today, I'm joined with Levester, who has been with us about four months, three months now, right at three months. And um, it's just been a pleasure to get to know him and, you know, just watch him grow and, and realize how great he is. But thanks for coming on. Thank you. All right. So normally each week I just ask, tell me about you. Tell me about Le- Leve- is it Levester? Yes, it's Levester. I always Levester say Levester, Harris. Esther, but Levester Harris. And uh, tell me about you. Well, I'm 34 year old African American male. You know, I had ups and downs in life. You know, I've been granted a second chance. I know that now. You know, um, I accomplished a lot of things, whether they was good or bad things. But I accomplished a lot to. Now know that there was life learning experiences. So you grew up in Mobile, Alabama. Yes, sir. So what what was your childhood like? What was it like being a kid? Well, it was me, my mother, and my sister. You know, she provided for us the best of her ability. And my family, we were a real close, tight knit family, full of love. You know, very um, oriented with the Christian background. But you know, you have the prodigal son that strays off. You know, and I had my moments where I strayed off, and fi- he eventually helps you find your way back. Okay, so you, um, where'd you go to school at? Satsuma High School. I went to Satsuma, and then um, you finished high school? Finished high school. Um, what was school high school like? Well, I graduated a year early. Um, I, was, I was one of those individuals, you know, was intelligent, but had a behavior problem, you know. I played sports. Uh, I, gra- I grasped the trade, which was welding, while attending uh, Satsuma High School. Um, basically, that narrows it down, sports and the behavior problem. But I got my school work done. Got your school done. And then as you got out of school, kind of what did you do after that? Well, I was working for the city, welding. 
And I uh, caught a case, robbery first. And it was basically one of those moments where you are who you hang around with, you know. It rubs off on you eventually. If you uh, put your hand in the fire long enough, it burns. Um, went to prison at the age of 19. I did 10 years on a 21-year sentence. I was guilty of basically knowing something without informing a victim or the officer before it happened, you know. And that was one of my stumbling blocks in life. But I had to come to a knowledge that some things occur only for it to be a stepping stone for you, you know, to look back on and help somebody along the way. Sometimes your your mess ups is only the hindrance to someone else's blessing. Cause we all created here to help someone, you know, for companionship. So you use that moment, those that issue that I mean, ten years, that's a long time to sit and think about, you know, what what is my purpose here? What do I need to do? So you got out and you got a job. Um, and then what kind of where did your life go? I feel well, like? I got married okay. when I got out. Got a little family started, you know. We relocated from the residence that we was formerly staying at. Um, I separated from my wife. I attempted suicide. And the whole time, God never took his hands off me, you know. And then I have a family full of prayer warriors, so support is always needed, you know, especially a person that's in a, a low point of their life where i also been diagnosed with PTSD, uh, major depression, uh, anxiety. But like I said, everything's an actual stepping stone. And this second chance that I was granted here at Ransom it, it taught me things, you know. I'm used to a work environment, but the work environment that I'm in now is like, you see people that cares, that's actually concerned. You know, I had a thing about trust also, you know. It's always, in my eyes, been about a check, you know, because that's the way life perceives things, you know. It says in God we trust, but only so many of them stand on that. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the family the family energy that you get from being here, it shows you, hey, tomorrow, if it have some have occurred in that day's time, tomorrow will be a better day, you know. And I got to the verge of where I wake up when I walk out my door and say, today's going to be a good day, you know. And that, that gives it energy. <laughs> that is so good because, you know, and, and a lot of people aren't honest about, you know, you talking about depression and PTSD and the things that you were suffering with. Once you become honest with those and start talking through those, then those around you can help you walk through those. And I think I've seen such great growth in you. I mean, I could tell you were a little standoffish at first because you didn't trust. You yes, know, sir. What, what are they really after? What, what do I got to give them? What, you know, whatever. I don't know what it was. Just I could just tell that you were a little stand up. But then. As you got to know us, as we got to know you, and you saw that, hey, we're, we're here to work with you through all these things, I've seen such growth in you. I've seen where you're good with, if something happens, you know, I'm just going to take it and trust that God's in it. You know, you had a couple rough things happen while you've been here, you know? Yes, sir. You went through divorce, and um, that hit you pretty hard, you know? But I think you knew that we cared about you. So you came back, and then you had a death in the family the other day. And I, I loved how you handled that. Yes, sir. You were strong there for your mom. You were there for your family. And then you did your obligation. You showed up for work the next day and did what you had to do. And I think it's become it, it's because it's become more than a check. Yes, sir. It's about who you are and who your purpose is. So tell me some key takeaways you've got. You've told us a few, but who are some people you've met along the way while you've been here that really um, have helped you in that process? Well, I would say Sandale, Champ, Matt, uh, James, of course, Mr. Bill, Jim, Amanda, Angela. It's, it's Earl, it's, it could go on because <laughs> it's it's just being around genuine people, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, if 
we all make mistakes. And if that's a choice that we choose to do at the end of the day, you're going to pretty much chastise yourself after doing it because, you know, at the end of the day, I, I hear Matt saying, hey, you know what to do, so do it. You know what I'm saying? Basically. Yeah. It's that accountability. Yes, yeah, sir. That a lot of times we don't have or we don't want. But then once we have it, like you said, you have that voice in your head, not just God's voice, in, you know, voice, but also your the people that you're – you don't want to let down. You don't want to, and it really ain't about letting them down. It's about letting yourself down. And, and I think that's what we've, we've learned through it, but I've seen you, um, you're, you do anything you're asked. You're a hard worker. You know, we've had a couple opportunities we're kind of working on with you, but you know, when I talk to you about him, you're just like, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. It don't matter. Yeah. He got that already mapped out. Yeah. He's already, he already knows. So I'm not really that concerned about it. So, you teach me things too every day, you know, because there'll be times where I'm, man, I want to get this guy where he needs to go, but then I try to make it happen, and that wasn't God's plan, you know. Exactly. So I'm really honored to have you within our program right now, and really, you've been here the whole time, the 90 days. So now it's just kind of a waiting pattern to see what you're doing, and you're not just waiting, doing nothing. You just keep doing what you was doing. You keep working hard. You know so much. You have so much experience. You have so much knowledge. And again, it wasn't anything to do with your work ethic. You're a hard worker. You just had to get to the point where you understood yourself. Yes, sir. And how to use your work to live out your purpose. And I think that's where you're working towards now. So as you went through our program, you went through reprogram, which is the classroom. What are some of the classes that stood out to you that we did? Basically... Knowing, knowing yourself and your self worth, that was that was a whole lot because it it gave me the strength to apologize to some people. You know what I'm saying? Because with you knowing yourself, you also can see someone else's worth, and it's moments like that that make you realize that hey, I owe some people an apology because how can I expect forgiveness for things that I know that I've done? You know what I'm saying? And I won't forgive the next person. You know. So how was that going back and apologizing? Well, the now some of some of the feedback was all right, kind of balanced. But then you have some feedback that is lashing out at you, and you you have to stand down, ten toes down, and then accept it. You know, because <laughs> yeah. hey, you know you done wrong. Yeah, and they're and they're hurt. Yeah, they're angry. Well, oh, they ain't gonna let him off that easy. Just come say he was sorry. But then, like you say, you just got to do it, and then let the spirit work in them to understand why you did it. And I, and I think I remember you sharing that because I think it came through story day, didn't it? Through yep. some of the, um, st the other ones in the class sharing their story. He realized yeah, I have oh, one myself. Dang, I, got one. I, I better probably take care of that. So that's, what's cool about stories. That's why I do this podcast is because I want people to hear stories. I want them to hear that, you know, everybody's just people. Every person has a story. It might be a little bit different, but we all have things we struggle with. So that's why we do that. That's why we do a lot of that during reprogram. So, um, again, I, I, I'm thankful you're here. I'm thankful that you're – I'm seeing that growth in you, but also just being a small part of it has been a blessing to me. And I know you're going to do great things. You're already doing great things, so it doesn't really matter. But you're going to do really great things. And – I've seen you go through the adversity and I've seen you come out on the other side, you know. I mean, most people spend 10 years in prison, they're going they're going to keep doing what they're doing, you know, and you aren't. You you you've made a decision, I'm going to do better. Whether that be for myself or for the fam my family or whoever, for other people. And so I I incur I I applaud you for that. Yes, sir. And I'm happy you. to have you here. I'm happy to be here. Well, I appreciate you guys joining us today. Thanks, um, Levester, for coming by and uh, just spending time with me and spending time with our listeners, all those people out there listening. Hopefully you got encouragement and you understand that, hey, you know what? We're just going to keep moving on. God's in control, and he's going to work all of the details out. He already knows ahead of time what's going to happen. So I hope that you enjoyed it. Tune in here every week. We're here every Wednesday. And we just bring you new, new stories, new individuals. Go to us, follow us anywhere that you have social media, but also like the podcast and also 
give us a review. That's how we get moved up on the list. And we thank you for that. And uh, we hope you enjoyed that story. So we will see you next week. Too many days in the darkness Without a glimpse of the light Running tired and broken and scared But I swear I'll never give up the fight With every